This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. EV programs keep getting delayed as automakers worry about customer demand and trying to make a profit on electrics. And it looks like that includes the Corvette program. Two years ago, Auto Forecast Solutions reported that a Corvette branded EV would go into production at GM's Grand River plant in Lansing, Michigan in 2025. Most speculated it was an electric SUV. But now Auto Forecast says that D segment SUV VET has been pushed back to June of 2030. And in February of this year, it said production of a Stingray EV would start in 2028, also at the Grand River plant. Now Auto Forecast says that will happen in June of 2029. That plant is also scheduled to get an electric Buick D-segment SUV and an electric Cadillac sedan. All of them will likely be built on GM's Altium platform, which suggests that an all-electric version of the current Corvette on the current platform is not going to happen. Good news for Tesla. The automaker can now legally challenge the state of Louisiana's ban on direct sales to customers. Two years ago, Tesla sued the Louisiana Motor Vehicle Commission, as well as dealerships owned by individual commissioners and the Louisiana Automobile Dealers Association, accusing them all of illegally banning direct sales and restricting leasing and service of its vehicles. That suit was originally dismissed by a lower court, but a federal appeals court has reversed that decision. Even though the Model Y was the best-selling car in the U.S. last year, 48 states either somehow limit or ban direct sales. Tesla can only operate stores or galleries in 29 states, and some even ban it from operating service centers. With Tesla sales sputtering, it needs to open up more markets. We've wondered for years why Tesla didn't press this all the way to the Supreme Court, since it could be an illegal restraint of interstate trade. And maybe this time around, it will fight harder. It's tough out there for automotive suppliers. New vehicle sales are weaker than expected this year. They invested heavily to make EV components, but sales volumes are well below forecasts, and automakers are looking to insource more components and software. That's why Continental, one of the largest automotive suppliers in the world, is looking to spin off most of its automotive operations. It would hold on to its tire business and what it calls ContiTech, which specializes in active safety and vehicle networking technology. The part that could get spun off makes brakes, chassis parts, and other components. Bloomberg reports that the spin off would be a bonanza for shareholders in the company that is not getting spun off, which it refers to as Conti Remainco. It would deliver 6 billion euros to shareholders in dividends and share buybacks. Continental is expected to make a decision on the spinoff by the end of the year. With more and more car buyers turning to the used car market because of higher prices of new vehicles, Consumer Reports is now providing ratings and recommendations for used cars. Its rankings are based on the reliability of 5- to 10-year-old vehicles from its annual auto survey. That survey is given to its members where they report on any issues they've had with their car in the last year. Using that info, Consumer Reports rated the most reliable used car brands, and Lexus and Toyota topped the list of 26 brands by a wide margin. Mazda, Acura, and Honda round out the top five. Stellantis didn't fare well with four of its brands at the bottom of the list. Tesla was at the bottom as well in the 24th spot. Consumer Reports also named its top 10 picks for used cars, but we don't have time to list them all. But we can say Toyota and Mazda account for half of them. Intrepid's NeoViPi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi 4 compute 
while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the Neo Vibe Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. Chinese tech giant Huawei has had a lot of initial success breaking into the automotive industry. It's already established a couple of joint ventures and has several tech partnerships that has now expanded to the biggest automaker in China. BYD's Feng Chengbao brand signed a deal with Huawei to use its LiDAR-based driver assistance system in a new large off-road SUV called the Bao 8. It says the system offers enhanced capabilities over the previous version and supports things like point-to-point -point navigation and remote parking. Despite signing the official agreement now, the two companies have already started full-scale testing, and the BOW 8 is expected to hit the market sometime this quarter. But like most other EV makers, Huawei is losing money on every vehicle it sells. It has a joint venture with Chinese automaker Series called Ido that sells an SUV called the M7, and Huawei claims it loses three to $4,000 on every one. What it really needs is more scale. We estimate Tesla started turning a profit when sales topped 50,000 units a quarter. And Huawei has a better chance of succeeding because it has both technology and joint venture partnerships. One way it's working on boosting sales is coming out with cheaper models. The M7 currently uses the same driver assistance system that Fang Cheng Bao is getting, but it just launched a pro version that features a vision-based system, which eliminates LiDAR and makes it cheaper. Prices for the M7 start at about $35,000. It's too expensive for automakers to develop future technology on their own, so Toyota and BMW are expanding their partnership in fuel cell vehicles. Toyota has supplied BMW with a limited number of fuel cell components since 2012. But under the new deal, Toyota will supply more key parts, including hydrogen tanks and fuel cell systems, and they'll collaborate on developing a hydrogen refueling network in Europe. BMW is aiming to begin mass production of its iX5 hydrogen vehicle in the next few years. And speaking of BMW, it's getting rid of humans from the car painting process. It says the paint shop at its plant in Hungary will be fully automated when its new class of vehicles start rolling down the line at the end of the year. Initially, it will be able to paint 30 vehicle bodies an hour, but says that can be increased significantly. What's more, the paint shop in Hungary will be the first in BMW's network to operate without fossil fuels. Instead, it will run entirely on electricity, cutting its CO2 emissions. The downside is that it will consume more power, but BMW says it's trying to offset that by getting all the power needed to run the plant from renewable energy sources. GM and Ford want to get into the banking business. Toyota and BMW are already there. These are what they call industrial banks, which can make loans, but do not accept public deposits and don't have any local branches. The loans they make are to dealers, customers, company employees, and their family members. While the finance arms of GM and Ford already arrange financing for dealers and customers, having their own bank would provide them with more stable funding and allow them to offer more financing options. Automotive News reports that for unknown reasons, GM just canceled its application for an industrial bank, but plans to resubmit it. Ford has also applied to open its own bank. And we sure find it interesting that automakers want to run their own banks. Need an affordable home EV charger? Well, you might want to check out Fisker's website. Since it's going bankrupt, Fisker has a fire sale going on. And that includes its home charging unit, which is made by a company called Wallbox. Now listed for $250, it's over half off the previous price. And from what we can find, it looks like a well-rated charger. But that brings us to the end of today's show. 
Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC, where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. And by Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Keeping your heart racing in and out of the gym. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza Sport AS tires with a 50,000 mile limited warranty. When we did our research for the talent that we need for this program, Michigan was really the top of the list. In order to be successful in this space, you really have to have the right people, the right mindset, the right environment. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly.